All right, and our third uh, club leader presenter is going to be John Simpson, and he's going to be talking about some of the things they've done with online payment. Okay, so John Simpson uh, graduated in 2000, and currently I'm on the board of directors for the Alumni Association, but I've had the opportunity over the past 15 years to be a part of several clubs, given how my family has relocated and moved around a little bit. So currently I am uh, closest to the Purdue Club in north northwest suburbs of Chicago, but I'm a past president of the Purdue Club of Chicago and a past president of the Purdue Club of Fort Wayne. And so I've had an experience uh, as technology has improved over the past 10, 15 years to see our teams able to adopt new technology of online payment methods to help us improve how we collect money um, with our events. So I'm not here to show you the how-to of some of these tools and what they do to work. Um, I'm actually here to promote more you know, follow-up and questions and probably encouraging more of the iModules research I think a lot of us want to take on after today. But the big deal of uh, why I think it's important to utilize online payment methods is because there's a lot of risk. Um, I've had experiences firsthand uh, with clubs where some of these moments have, have come up and our teams have struggled in the beginning and found that we needed to quickly adopt uh, technology to collect money online. So when I, when I mean risk, what we found was, you know, we're volunteers. We are, we are club leaders that have limited time. And as we go into an event, we go out of an event, it is very hard to manually track accounting, whether it's with that bank uh, through you know, the manual paperwork we're using or the online banking system. Uh, just to track the accounting through spreadsheets anymore is, is very difficult. We also find that there's no shows that create loss, right? We have many people that want to join our events. When they don't show up and we held a spot and we paid for them, that's on us. If we would have collected that money up front, maybe we could have uh, had a different moment of where we ended up with the balance. So that is another risk. Money in the bank to pay vendors at the event. If you do the golf outings, you know that they want their money right then and there. And if you don't have money, you're taking out loans from the officers. You're using personal credit cards. And I know we all like to use those credit cards with points, but there's also liabilities and things that come with that type of uh, moment in our personal lives. And then finally, <coughs> checks and cash do get lost at times. I won't go into great storytelling, but I can tell you that there have been moments where our club literally saw money one day, couldn't find money the next day. And there was you know, some pretty serious action taken years ago, right? This is not recent times, but pretty serious action taken to figure out how to get that money back. And so all I can say is if you're not using online payment methods now, start thinking about the risk. So I'm not here to teach you and educate and promote all the tools available. This is from the experience I've had with my teams. I've had some very uh, savvy <laughs> folks that know how to use the technology better than me. When I was uh, the president of the Chicago Club years ago, Mike Schultz was the treasurer that stepped up and basically took us from a manual to automated cash system. Uh, we didn't even use PayPal at the time. That was how long ago. It was just emerging. Um, but what we find with with these type of online payment tools is there's definitely payment collected before the event happens. And it's a very secure process, right? So uh, most of us now are, are doing something with, with how we buy online. And so you, you trust that interaction with these reputable <coughs> firms. You also get the automatic, automatic receipts, right? So a lot of us, if we're trying to use some tax deduction in, in the type of events we run, we don't want to have to manually create the receipts as follow-up. This system does that. You can put disclaimers and, and typically wording at the bottom of a receipt when people pay online. That helps them say, you know, please consult with your tax advisor if you feel this is a deductible opportunity. Um, there's a lot of reporting available. So no matter if it's PayPal, Eventbrite, Square, it all looks very different. Um, I'm not promoting one right now, but the idea is there's a lot of reporting available. And that history has the payer information. So as you are meeting new alumni and you're finding new opportunities to, to communicate with them, this is a channel to get that personal information of email, address, and follow up. And then finally, these tools help promote with your teams transparency. What I mean by that is it's not just the treasurer that should have access to the login. You should have at least two or three people that have login and password rights to see 
transparently what's going on as payments collected. This is too important of money being handled at times. And it's okay. I mean, if you guys are officers, you, you should be respected as leaders internally to trust with this type of detail, right? And now, the watchouts, though, even though they're not cons, I would call them watchouts, every, everyone has a different fee. There's fees on credit cards that are different, fees on the transaction. Um, and so that's definitely a watch out. And I think the user experience um, with the screens for not only the, the payer, but you as an administrator it is a very different experience as you move from one tool to another. Uh, so you definitely want to find something that's most comfortable. Uh, the time for a club to receive payment, that's obviously one of the most important questions to ask when you do join one of these vendors. Can you get your money every month or two or three times a month from the vendor into your bank accounts? That's a fair question to ask. They will do that as you talk to them more. It may not be apparent in when the sign-up process happens, but like with Eventbrite, you can get every 15th day, every 30th day of the month, you know, if your events are promoted that far in advance, payment in your account. But how long afterwards the, the event ends is the big question too. When can I get my final payment? Um, the fact that you need to learn a new system and your team has to adopt something new takes time. So I would say as a volunteer, you need to think about that. And the, the final watch out that, you know, is definitely important is how that link is shared. So the ability for you as a team, as people are referring the events uh, with their friends and family, how that link can get shared. Is it something so long that somebody didn't know they could create it a, you know, a bit.ly, it's called a shortcut, abbreviated URL? Um, or is there tools within the payment system to abbreviate the long links we notice from PayPal at times? You know, but how that gets copied as a hyperlink and how we can administer that with these systems, they have features to do that. So not promoting too much more pros and cons, but with the experience that you know, our teams have seen uh, with using at least these three, you'll find PayPal typically uh, no thrills, uh, most cost efficient at times. Actually, PayPal and, and I know Eventbrite, they both have 501c3 eligibility. So if you choose as a club, if you have 501c3 status, that nonprofit uh, discounting with these vendors works. And also, you can work with Purdue alumni to, to explore how a 501c3 opportunity can get applied to discounting this with your club. So it's a fair question to follow up with the Purdue alumni team. Uh, PayPal has simple website integration. You'll find it recognized, secure with all ages. And then, you know, there is mobile card reader devices now coming out. Uh, whether you have a smartphone or you have a separate device with PayPal, it's, it's getting more user friendly. I think people are, are becoming more comfortable with it. How many have a square that they're starting to use at their events? Yeah, I figured it's, it's starting to become more known, right? Like a couple years ago, uh, there was a presentation on Square at one of these conferences. But the idea is it's that little, little device you can swipe your cards through on a smartphone. It's not meant for advanced online payment. Uh, there are some features of the technology you could probably figure it out. But it's more popular for if you're selling raffle items, door prize items, things like that. Um, you know, Square is becoming easy to use, uh, and, and, and it helps avoid having cash to make change. So we know we most know we can spend a lot more money with our cards than the limited cash we have. Why not have a Square on site for those events? Uh, you can set up auto withdrawal to bank uh, situations, so it goes right to your bank, and, and it is very mobile app friendly. Um, finally, the Eventbrite technology. I'm not sure how many people use Eventbrite. Okay. So uh, recently, I've been more of a fan of Eventbrite. I think it's just because my most recent experience has been with Eventbrite. But you have an option to pass on the fees to the buyer. It's very apparent when they go to sign up for that $25 registration that they're going to pay an additional $2.33 or whatever the calculation is when they go. But the idea is you can pass that on to the buyer and not absorb it into your cost of event. So I think that's a pretty nice feature. You can also create free events. So if you think about the picnics, you're trying to comp the students, or you're trying to comp certain people, but keep track the same way. You can create an itemized moment of this person is free, and you just create some very specific wording around this is a freshman student, or this is a student-only uh, registration. And, and it's free. There's no fees for that, right? But it's just a great feature. Has an excellent contact management system included uh, as part of the, the technology. It actually provides Google and Facebook integration. So what I mean by that with Google is, you know, when you search for events in your local area, 
uh, if you do this with Eventbrite, it actually promotes within Google Hits. You know, maybe it's a nonprofit event you created. It will list that in one of the first events people do searches for. Um, you can easily communicate links, and it's generally the most expensive event option, though. So that's, that's probably a watch out uh, with that. There is no mobile reader. So final slide, where to go from here? Um, I, I do think you need to look at how you're handling risk today and how you can handle less cash and less checks going forward. Um, I know it's a hard moment in your club's use of technology to adopt online payment systems, so I would encourage you to look at iModules if there's moments uh, it, that's now being built in. Uh, I think we need to look to the office to help us with more of this instead of figuring it out all the time ourselves. You currently have technology or the savvy on your team. To manage it, that's good. Don't, don't change, you know, there's no need to change at the moment. But think about the needs of the clubs. You know, do you need more mobile payment opportunities? Are you selling the raffle, door prize tickets? Um, like I said earlier, people will spend more on a card than they will with the limited cash or no check in their pocket. And I think you want to embrace that and, and try to help your scholarship accounts. Uh, do you have free events and, you know, do you have the budget to absorb these fees going forward? Um, I think these are all points that you want to start considering. But I'm happy to answer questions or at least point you in the direction you want to take as a next step. I got a few minutes to do that, but uh, that's really what I wanted to share, at least to break the ice with online payment options. Before we open up, anything, Kelly or Mark? Other questions? Yes, and we've um, we've got that question a lot from a lot of our live streamers. So everything that was presented today, we'll we'll package it together and email the links out so you can kind of dive through. That's okay. I'll hold. The, okay. That's okay. What? Um, so for the live streamers, yes, everything that was presented today, we'll get it um, packaged up so you can kind of dig in deeper, and we'll also have contact information for the presenters. Hope that's okay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> question. That's fine. <laughs> I think you'll never get away from cash and checks, and you don't want to limit that option. I know when I was in Fort Wayne with the club uh, five, six years ago, I was I was like a, a you know proponent of all technology we could adopt. Let's let's figure it out together. Um, we we found that I would say 60% right off the bat said they'll never go online and, and sign up with a credit card. Now. That's probably changed in six years, uh, but I do know that more than half, right, Wayne, were not willing to, to do anything online and wanted to mail in that check. So we still had to include that in on the golf outing dinner, and you know, you just got to adopt it. But I think I think the trend's going down with, you know, how many people really want to use cash and our opportunities going up as a club to you know fill the coffers of scholarship. So I, I'm gonna hopefully see that squares at anything I do with the, you know not just Purdue alumni groups but other 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 organizations. A third. Sure, and that's that's okay. We still get their money. Other questions? The only other thing I, I, I wanted to mention was I think I uh, received some feedback around. You know, when you do use Square, make sure you test it out ahead of time. If you're in a venue that has no Wi-Fi or has no capability for your smartphone to use broadband connection, uh, you just killed yourself, and you, you put all that time and effort to set it up, and then you get there in the basement 
of a church or of a hotel and, and there's no access. So, you know, you do need to test these tools ahead of time um, and make sure that that comes across with we the team. And we just started, she asked this question actually, just using the square, the new iPhones not having a jack. Is that a new Oh, well, we've got to get the same something. Yeah, I know. Oh, Teddy's got it. Yeah. Happy money handling. <laughs> <laughs>